put the order under God. Eh? And I don't say that because he's the king. I say that because if anyone watched anything by Stephen Mailer, Stephen Mailer's got a documentary called uh, The Land of Osiris. Check it out on Google Video, fantastic bit. But he basically concludes that Pharaoh is actually a corruption of the word Peneta, which basically means power, nature. So what we're looking at here, even though this is the house of Hanover, this is a powerhouse, like the house of Versace, the house of Savoy, the house of whoever, fashion houses, art houses, perfumeries, house of whoever, house of Habsburg. This house is literally a powerful house, which is what Pharaoh means. It never meant king. It didn't actually be a feminine derivative, it's a female title, Panetta, house of power, or a natural power. Again, this is a quick picture of William made Knight of the Garter. I wanted to really get a picture of uh, the date. But on this one, it just confirms that Edward III, this whole garter was uh, created in 1348. Why is 1348 important? April 22nd, August 2008. Basically, this is concluded, this is from the Prince of Wales' own website. He's been made the thousandth registry into this order. Now, I don't know whether that's pertinent to the uh, thousandth point of light, but it's just interesting the date there is August, uh, July. Is it June? 2nd of April 2008. So, we'll look at this date because something happened around here which was interesting. It says the Order of the Guard is the most senior and the oldest British Order of Chivalry and was founded by Edward III in 1348. Note this date, 1348. The insignia of the order have developed over the centuries, starting with a garter and bands depicting St. George and a dragon. A collar was added in the 16th century, broadly banned 17th century. We're going to look at this, because we're looking at 1348 and this link is connected with St. George and the dragon. Why has that got to do with Prince William? Order of St. George was first established by King Charles of France, and, well, King Charles of Hungary, but I think he was French lineage. In 1326, so this is earlier, this is 20 years earlier. The Order of the Dragon, 1408. That's the order that Vlad III, Dracula, he was, a, he was in this order, he was the founder of it, the Order of the Dragon. So you got an interesting vampiric Romanian Slavic connection with Vlad the Impaler, who was going against the Ottoman Empire at the time. Its symbol was the image of a circular dragon with its tail coiled around its neck. On its back, from the base of its neck to its tail, was the Red Cross of St. George on the background of a silver field. Now, as another part of symbology, this actually represents the Milky Way, the Ouroboros. Uh, in masonry, it's known as the involution and the evolution. So it's kind of like death and rebirth, it's endless cycles, essentially. So we go to the Royal Society of St. George, just to give a perspective, let's go to their source material. What do they say? Who's St. George? He was born in Cappadocia, in what's now Turkey, in the year 280 AD. So we've gone back a bit from 1326 to 280 AD. From his physical description, he was of Darian origin, which means he was a Persian. Diocletian's second in command was Galenius, was conqueror of Persia and an avid supporter of the pagan religion, which he was. This is Diocletian, absolutely vile man, he does some of the world's worst atrocities, he's just been known as the most brutal man of the pagan times when this happened. An edict was issued that all Christian churches were to be destroyed and all scripture to be burned. Anyone admitting to being a Christian would, quote this one, lose his rights as a citizen if not his life, because this is Roman law. But this guy, he was burning people on spits, he was uh, torturing them, he was tearing them apart and then burning them. I mean, there was just nothing this guy couldn't create, it was just, wow, terrible man. <coughs> and I don't talk about vile people. <laughs> Look at that. The Queen actually gave her 
So as here, former Prime Minister Baroness Thatcher, a non-royal member of the island, did not take part in today's procession, but was at the service. She, she probably didn't know where she was, to be honest, because she's got this... She's probably got the nation's karma on her shoulders, and she's, uh... I think she's lost the plot now, I think, but she is also a member. I'm sure you've seen this, Dun and, Brad, Dun and Bradstreet from John Harris's stuff. This stuff doesn't exist. You look at this on Dun and Bradstreet, it's all being removed. I'm glad that took pictures when I did. Well, the City of London, going back to Magna Carta and the three rights that exist from that charter. Sit, the creation of the city, so the City of London status. And you'll see Guildhall, PO Box 270 is the address. There it is there. You'll also see Direct Gov is a main think tank that's directly affiliated with this site. City of London. The City of London Corporation is the police authority for the City of London Police. So what does that mean? Well, the City of London Police. There's the address, 36451 London. Also on Dunham Brad Street, down here. There's the address. Same address, 36451 London. And I'm going to point you to this, talk about St. George, the Order of the Dragon, Secret Societies. Look at this sigil. Someone's had the letters patent per permission to create this on behalf of the police. So what is it? What does it symbolise? I'm going to do black and white checkerboard, but it's red and, red and white, but symbolising the same. There's an interesting connection. What does that do on the Order of the Dragon, which is an insignia of the Templar Militaris? What does that do with being the guardians of your subjects? As I said there, O oh Lord, guide us. My question is, what oh Lord? Exactly. Exactly. But there's an interesting connection. Also got Merovingian dragons here as well. I'm going to look a bit more symbology as we go along. But just think about that one. Considering what we just read about St. George and who he was and the history behind it. What is this doing there? And as a segue, did anyone watch the World Cup when England played Germany? No. Did anyone not have a TV then? Well, put it this way. England got beat. Uh, I found it interesting that I didn't see one Union Jack in, in the whole auditorium. They all had this St. George's flag. So the whole stadium was charged with Germanic power. <laughs> and the English people don't think really fully understood what they were all waving. Because all the Germans thought, great, you're waving our flag. Excellent. Active Union, we stepped forward 93 years. Active Union was passed by Irish and British Parliaments despite much opposition, signed by Mad King George III in August 1800. Included Catholic emancipation, which means Catholics were still not allowed to rule anywhere at all in Parliament. Thwarted by Charles, Charles III, who refused to break his coronation oath to uphold the Anglican Church, which is important, but tied them to Protestantism. The Union said Ireland was to be joined to Great Britain into a single kingdom, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Dublin Parliament was abolished, Ireland was to be represented at Westminster. What happens when you're represented? You lose your voice. You lose your power of voice because someone else is speaking on your behalf. Hundred lords, all the usual nonsense, all the Anglicans. Anglican Church was to be recognised in the official Church of Ireland. There was free trade. We, we see this today. Free trade. It basically means you can go in and rape the country that you're after. Because uh, 50 years later, Irish, Irish history, that's the potato famine when England came on uh, and started interfering with them and the governance. A lot of Irish people died. So this idea of free trade is a misnomer. Ireland was to keep a separate exchequer and was to be responsible for 217 of the general expense of the United Kingdom, so they were taxed as well for joining the kingdom. No Catholics were allowed, there was no Catholic emancipation. And interesting enough for me, my, with me liking symbology, this was created 
It's got now, we've got the St. George flag, but this is a unified kingdom. Briefly, before you, uh, the potato famine in Ireland, this is the one I encountered. And what it essentially does is, there's the actual statute. And what it says is, if any corporation whatsoever shall within the